Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Thanks for being here. I appreciate it. This week I'm working on a continuation of my pearlescent series with the Amsterdam pearl colors. Uh, being this week, pearl white, pearl blue, pearl red, and pearl green, which I think are going to look really, really pretty. But first, to get all those pretty colors to pop on out later on, I've got to lay down some base color with my Oxide Black by Amsterdam. And this is kind of my go-to in the past few pours with my base darker colors as black. I have a darker blue I'll try in the next week or two with uh, my next few videos, which I want to give a shout out to uh, because I'm curious how a really dark blue may compare to a dark black color as my base coat. Okay, and for this pour, I wanted my colors to be in a very specific place on the canvas. Knowing that when I was going to eventually tilt my colors, I wanted them in a, a particular combination to try to maximize their color and their pop from these pearlescent colors that are also known as interference colors as well. Um, now, this is my white first, and I wanted to make as many of the similar um, type puddles as possible in a very symmetrical way. So wanting to just, again, make sure that I had as much color in and around the center as possible with my whites, wanting white to be a primary color in my pour altogether. Okay, and as for this particular canvas, I'm working with a 20 inch by 20 inch gallery wrap canvas. And now I'm a big fan in all my pours you may have seen before, of rectangles, 12 by 24, 10 by 20, um, 12 by 36, for example, but never have I usually poured on a square. So the dimensions 20 by 20 were fine to work with, a bit unusual for me, but it felt fine. And I think that after doing this pour, I may work more with squares just to get a bit of a better feel for how they flow and what kind of patterns I can get for the sake of symmetry. Uh, symmetry, wow. And um, also just di different types of pours generally. So I love my swipes and also my puddle pours, but I guess going forward after this puddle, I'll be sure to try out some more squares altogether. Okay, now a quick question regarding puddle pours. For those of you who actually do pour or paint, do you prefer to add your puddles in a specific um, pattern, we'll call it, or would you prefer to stack them on top of one another? So I wound up stacking a few colors because I was running out of space for my oxide black, which was my fault. I feel like I could have used a bit more paint or at least spread it out corner to corner, ensuring that my pearlescent colors spread color-wise to their best of their ability. So um, anyway, do you guys prefer it again to stack your colors or to just simply fill the black space, the negative black space in the middle or the edges? Uh, let me know in the comments below. I'm curious how you guys approach your pores and how you go about um, your stacking or not. Now, before I forget, I was asked this past week if I premix my paints because someone noticed I have very small cups with my pores most weeks, which is true. Now, I typically mix my paints the night before I pour. Now, as a bit of a feedback for you guys who may not have used pearlescence before, I have found that even if I really, really water down or add lots of pouring medium, to my pearlescent colors, they are still incredibly thick the next day. So if you pre-mix your paints like I do, um, generally speaking a night beforehand, you're going to wind up with a bit of a thicker consistency than you probably went to bed with. So um, that is my feedback on the Amsterdam pearlescents. I think they're gorgeous though. Um, I did find that if you mix them ahead of time, you may find yourself adding water the next day before you begin to paint. Now, having added the water as well will create one bazillion um, uh, little air bubbles in each color. So I torched this painting an awful lot just to get all of those bubbles out of each section individually. There were just, uh, I, I couldn't even stop. I couldn't believe how many little pinholes were popping. 
over this entire canvas. I did this for probably, I'd say for about 25 or 30 good seconds to get all those pinholes out. Okay, and with all those pinholes popped, I decided to go ahead and wreck this puddle pour with the back of my paintbrush, which works just fantastic. It is rounded, so it doesn't actually kind of scrape your canvas as you go back and forth. And I wanted to make sure and get every little puddle, just breaking up those sections into individual pockets of color for my tilts later on. And I also love making this controlled mess of a beautiful design with the back of that paintbrush. The pearlescents are beginning to pop with their color, which is really kind of cool as it sits for a bit. But um, I find that wrecking paintings with a brush is really kind of just a its own little cool feeling. So I'd highly recommend going into these tilts here. Okay, now as for my tilt, I decided to go into this uh, tilting a bit more slowly than typical because I found in the past that I will often tilt way too soon before I'm ready for my colors to spill off the edges. So I wanted to go back and forth and side to side with my color, giving it a bit of the opportunity to spread across the canvas, but also uh, feel out where the paint was on the canvas, making sure I tilted the proper side first. Now, I also really love how these pearlescent colors decide to show themselves once you begin to tilt and just, you know, kind of break up your puddles from the beginning from the pour. Uh, we can see our blues peeking through. We have got some white on the inside portions as well as the red. And I think it's kind of cool how they begin to show their color before actually popping through when it begins to dry. And with that first tilt out of the way, I was really pretty impressed with how this pattern decided to show itself. Although out of camera, out of frame, we can't see it. The, the black was really impressing me with how well it was holding its shape and the puddles were holding their color. So all in all, I was very happy with how this tilt went from the first two corners anyhow. Um, you've got to kind of pull it back quickly to make sure you don't lose too much paint back to the center. And I wanted to go back and forth from corner to corner, but also trying to maintain as much paint as possible not to lose too much for that last corner. Now I always find what I'm doing these voiceovers after the fact that there's things I don't see what I'm pouring in the moment that are very cool after the fact. Now I'm just seeing a lot of this blue and green and white pop through which has been stacked with other colors like there's some green on the blue for example and reds over top of white. It's neat to see how well these colors held and I'm quite happy with how this paint works as a whole. And ultimately this pattern I think really did do its job. I went for a rec pour. I decided no swipe this week um, just for a bit of a change up to get away from my, my regular you know, tilts with lacing. But soon enough I'll be back to my old tricks with my lacing. But wanted to simply just do a simple pour with some puddles and a bit of a rec with the back of a paintbrush to get a really cool design and see how this one dries up. And now off this last corner, just wanting to go back to the center with my design, making sure all my colors I poured initially off the beginning are back in the middle. So this is my, my slow end to the pour where my colors are just going back to the middle to dry up on their own. But um, here we are with the finished product as a bit of a wet look. It looks really kind of dull to begin with, but over time begins to dry quite well. And here is my wet look of the overtop version about 20 minutes later. So there's some color poking through. Um, not quite as bright as a little bit later in the video, but I'll show you that afterwards. Now, um, the again, the designs held their shape well. My rec was just what it wanted to be. But also towards this very aggressively after the fact because there were still a thousand little pinholes everywhere, making sure those didn't pop through to create a bit of a distortion on the final product. Now here is my wet result, or sorry, my, my dried result later on 
about a day and a half later. So this is probably not quite 40 hours later. And look at the difference between the very dull color before and the dry version. Again, not quite two days later, but I think these pearlescent colors are something you should try if you are into acrylic painting or pouring. They are so much fun and um, I could be happier with this pour. If you've come this far, I appreciate you and click the like button below and we'll see you again in the next one.